English words may be inflected. That means they get modified according to their grammatical context. Words can be modified according to a grammatical case. For example, I is modified to me and my in different contexts. Words are also modified according to the number. For example, child goes to children. Inflection can also be based on tense. For example, the verb run can be modified to ran or running depending on when the action happened. Inflecting verbs is also called conjugation. The goal of stemming and lemmatization is to reduce inflected word forms to some kind of basic root. The idea is that, despite their different spellings or morphologies, the words me and my, or child and children, refer to the same concept. Thus, whether a text refers to one child or many children, or to the action of running in the present or past tense, it doesn't matter for many applications. For example, when analysing a large corpus of news articles, the difference between president and presidents might not be as important as the fact that both words are referring to the same person or the fact that run and running refer to the same action. A common example you may not have thought of is search. Many search algorithms perform some sort of stemming or lemmatization before doing a lookup. Before I start telling you about algorithms, let's define some terminology. A word stem is just a part of the word responsible for the meaning. For example, the word friendship has the stem friend, which is the concept the word informs us about. The suffix ship is cut off since this is just a modifier of the stem. The stems don't have to be real words. For example, the word destabilize has a prefix d and a suffix eyes, which are chopped off to make the stem stable, which is not a word, but is a stem. A lemma is a word. It's the canonical or standard root of a word. For example, if you look up the word mice in the dictionary, you'll be referred to its lemma mouse for the definition. So unlike a stem, a lemma is a word. Algorithms for automatically stemming words are typically heuristic ones, which remove suffixes, that is word endings, in the hopes of reducing words to their stem. The best known and one of the most common stemming algorithms is the Porter Stemmer, developed in the 1980s which consists of five phases that apply a series of word reduction rules to the longest identified suffixes. The algorithm is a little complex, though maybe only a few hundred lines of code, but examples of the types of rules it applies are SSES goes to SS, IES goes to I, and S goes to S. A different stemming algorithm you might come across is the Lancaster Stemmer, also called the Pace Husk Stemmer. The main difference is that the rules specify removal or replacement of an ending. When you do a replacement, the last letter tells you what rule to go to next. So here we have this strange process where S-I-O-N endings are first replaced with a J, then the J is replaced with a D. Let's do some quick tests to compare the two algorithms. First we create some stemmer objects using NLTK. Then we're going to apply them to some words. Think about what the output should be. The root of each of these, I guess, is child, daughter, good, and pony. This is the output. They both do bad on children. The Porter Stemmer at least doesn't change daughter, but the Lancaster one removes the ER ending. Again, the Porter Stemmer doesn't change the word, but Lancaster finds the wrong stem. Finally, Lancaster finds the right root and Porter is close. Let's try them on a longer piece of text. We will write a little function to do the stemming. Here we're using NLTK's sentence tokenizer to split the paragraph by sentence first, then we split up the words in a sentence. Not strictly necessary here, but I just did it to show you the sentence tokenizer. Apart from that, it's all standard Python. This is the result. Pause and take it in for a moment. Yellow text shows the stems in common between both algorithms. Blue shows words stem by Porter differently than Lancaster, and orange shows the other way around. The Lancaster stemmer is generally said to be much more aggressive at reducing words, and comparing it to the Porter stemmer, it certainly has changed the text a lot more. Which one to use depends on your application. Is it more important to keep distinct words distinct, or do you want to reduce everything down as much as possible? Lemmatization is somewhat more sophisticated than stemming in that it aims to deal with the complex situations we face all the time in real language. For example, a word like good can morph radically when used in different contexts. One way to deal with this is to just use the dictionary. WordNet is a large database of English words, where nouns, verbs, adjectives and adverbs are grouped together into sets of cognitive synonyms, which are called synsets. Each synset expresses a distinct concept. For example, here's what you get when you look up the word child. You get a bunch of synonyms like a thesaurus and some example sentences. Clicking on the little S gives you the sin set. I've expanded out the derivationally related form to get to childhood. Don't panic, your job is not to be a professional linguist, so you don't have to worry about understanding every detail of this. However, we can use this as a resource for lemmatization. NLTK has done the hard work for us. A few small changes to our code, and we can use the word net dictionary to perform the text reduction. This is the result. Compared to the stemmers, not much has changed. This might be a good thing or a bad thing, but at least here everything is still a correct English word. One more example. Let's run both the stemmers and WordNet on the sentence, I could have provided better for my children. Looking at the output, WordNet works on children, but doesn't reduce provided. We can have more complex situations. For example, meeting can be a noun, as in I have a meeting, or a verb, as in I was meeting my boss. The correct route is different depending on the context. One way to provide that context is via part of speech tagging where we label words as nouns or verbs, but we've already covered the basics of stemming and lemmatization and I will leave that for further reading. In practice, these can be useful tools, but some care is needed and no one algorithm is perfect for every situation.